Throw Gang, we are joined by the kickback of the slick pack, Lawrence Schlossman and myself, going double breasted because I love boobs. James Harris. <laughs> Flip on the Zoomy podcast with Jimmy. Somebody's puns are not very good. Damn. We're listening to Weezer, so. Why are you bullying me? Sorry, bro. No headphones? No, nah, dude, I can't. <laughs> You do look crazy with them. You look crazy in general. Thanks, dude. In a good way. Thanks, buddy. In a good way. Uh, welcome to the weekly run of the boys, which today's full episode only available on patreon.com slash throwing fits. Before we get into marinating in other people's butt sweat, gross, Trump sneakers, and rizzing up adult film stars, let's get into a fit check. Um, you want to start? Sure. Upstairs, I was wearing our Lagache loafers, uh, Manresa socks. The double breasted suit is our legacy workshop. Made in England. Damn, I forgot the workshop last week. Yeah, my fucking... Honestly, it's my number one suit right now. Yeah? This is the number one stunner. I love the fit, bro. Love it, too. Um, Then I got the... Uh, the MF Pen shirt I normally wear with it is recovering from its time in Vegas in the with the dry cleaner. But I got in a little Ralphie. Um, <laughs> oh! Is there a horsey? Horsepower? No. Oh, really? No. Are you sure? Yeah, I went Damn. unbranded. Yeah. Oh, it's, okay. maybe, maybe it's, no, there's no horsey. J Muser... Chocolate tie. I fucking love this. Bitch. That's a great tie. I believe that was in a dumper. At one it point. was after I bought it. Um, <laughs> most things in the dumper. I always put a, uh, something I actually own and love already in the dumper. Yeah. I'll usually, do stuff I can't afford. Right. I'll usually put in something that uh, I got for free that I then own and love. Yeah. When you do the dumper, you're just looking around. Like, what could what I did I get? What did I get for free? Um, Sorry, guys. I know you hate, you hate hearing that. Pony hair, leopard print belt from the Malmomies at Trebian. Nice. And everywhere and what a it's everywhere i think so okay. no this is before everywhere mm. um right in the fucking archive haynes boxers yeah forgot to put on jewels sipping on a dp and green points finest what about All yourself right. uh the boots in the suit are second layer shout the, out the boys uh shout out the boys um, they love seeing me wear the fucking snake skin on my nick wave shit in vegas oh yeah dude that's right and they were like yo Next time we next time we come to Vegas, let us know we're pulling up. I'm like, oh yeah, oh. damn dude, careful. making the, making the drive. Be careful, dude. They should run that. They should run that back. I mean, these are the snakeskin version of the jacket that you right. claim we didn't have a beautiful moment over, which I will, you know, um, take to your grave. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that 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 happened. That definitely happened. Um, <laughs> yes, it did. It did. I'm, that's yes. we bonded over clothes. Words of affirmation. Um, I am wearing no name black dress socks. The belt is Maximum Henry. The shirt is a vintage. Vintage Brioni from Brionski. Chickies. Vinti Brionski. You're going with the black and brown. I love it. It's, well, normally when I wear this shirt, you use a word to describe me that we're not going to say. Rapist. Yep. That's that, it. That's your, that's your word. You're no, taking I, it back. <laughs> you, first of all, you're the one that describes yourself as that word when you wear it. Whoa, 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 whoa. And that's when you're wearing it like. That was a, that was a dig from a friend that I think has now just become, you know, part of the, the throng fits. Cannon, cannon. It's the lexicon when I wear out, when I wear the, um, the murder. It's just your, it's just your, down. it's just your rape lore. Um, <laughs> sorry. That's Don't what, fucking that's what say shit line? like that publicly, dude. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that, that is the line. It looks good under the suit. I think when you wear it with like jeans and shit. Yeah. It looks a little Ari. <laughs> Little Ari Gold, um, <laughs> Chad Jeremy Piven, or maybe not. Um, no. Rolly on the wrist, no. <laughs> waving on the fingy, wifey on the pinky, chrome on the other hand, and the hydro flask that I left here last week is back in my possession and filled to the brim with Green Point's finest. When you don't have the hydro flask at home, are you drinking water? No, actually, it's funny you say this because I went to Nalgene yeah. mode via my wife, who has like just a bunch that like have been promo from like yoga classes. She's not a Stanley girlie. Uh, no. Um, one. The attached cap is the best part of the analogy. They yeah, need to know. make hydro flasks where the cap somehow can be attached. I don't know sure if the material do. fucking, you know, you know, lends itself to that. But that's the big thing for me. I lose the cap all the time. Hydro flask said no cap. Um, I'm currently on a water flush. Hold on. I'm not done. OK, sorry. Supposed to boxer briefs. Oh, nice. <laughs> and the coat. What was the coat? Oh, the coat is a big old Gant shearling. Came through today looking like a fucking chocolate pimp. Yeah, which you can't see because it wasn't in the photo. No, so, no. Which is even close. Uh, I was wearing this other awesome coat that uh, totally wasn't the fit pick either. Yeah, yeah. No, it's uh, you. A first of all, you asked me. <laughs> okay, to be clear. Uh, but it is suit month. Suit month rolls on, but maybe it's over. Suit month <laughs> is coming to an end. We'll always have suit month, Lawrence. We'll always um, have suit month. <laughs> What's next month going to be? What's the theme? Pants month. Cool. <laughs> nice. Hell yeah. Um, Pants. 
Yeah, speaking of the the Greenpoint's finest, I am currently on a water. I don't know what the term is because I'm not like a I was talking about, cleanse. I'm talking about this in this week's afters, okay. where it's like, yeah, I get into a thing, but I'm like that into it, where I like know the names and the terminology and shit. Right. It's some sort of like water flush, where I'm loading up on water. What does that mean, loading up? Like my personal trainer. So I'm going on a little trip. Yeah, to Jamaica. Jamaica, Jamaica. Yeah, done the pussy red. Um, <laughs> so respectful. That's just, that's what the guy says. He's not even Jamaican. He's, <laughs> he's been accepted. The white, yeah. M dot R, a.k.a. the white lion. Mm -hmm. I am going to come back speaking Patois, by the way. Just FYI, just get ahead of did the you, cancellation. Did you, because you were so early on M dot R, and he obviously became a meme, if not a goat, um, did you ever watch the white lion documentary? On him? Yeah. I started it. I, again, I don't really give a fuck. Like, I'm not getting into the weeds on shit. I just like it or I don't. You or know like I mean? you, it's like never meet your heroes. I don't actually want to know about the white lion. I just want to know that he exists and that's it, right? Well, it's like vultures. It's like, yeah, I played vultures. You asked me about it. It's like, yeah, it was pretty good. I'm never going to listen to it again. But then really? you have a cardiologist over here. like, oh, well, actually, the vocals were reminiscent of Donda. But before that, the production was really, you know, it's on some graduation type beat. Uh, it's funny. Type shit or whatever. Are you calling me a cardiologist? No, I think you. I'm past wish that. you were one. Oh, you passed that. Yeah, okay. but I'm. I am going crazy viral because I made fun of right. a, an old take, and the comments are all Kanye all just being like, "It's his best since it's Jesus Part Two, or it's best since Pablo," and this. And I'm like, "Wow, these people exactly. need to get a fucking life." Or how about this? Just host a podcast, a Kanye just podcast. Start a pod. Yeah, I'm, of course. Why not? Um, Wait, so you're never gonna play it again, really? I, I just don't. Re it yeah. is growing on me. Okay. All right. <laughs> anyway, um, I was told to uh, drink twice as much water, twice as much as the already absurd amount of water that I drink every day. So, which like, is what was like? What's like, your baseline? How many of these? How many hydro flasks? How many Nalgene's? Now Nalgene's. Typically, I would say like three or four. So now it's got to be six to eight of these a day. Are you putting down six to eight? Is that possible? I'm fucking whizzing, bro. Yeah. I'm pee peeing. Okay. Um, like crazy. <laughs> Thanks for clarifying. <laughs> uh, I. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the picture perfect image of health. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sound like me, dude. Um, yeah, I do. Uh, I think I've been two days of like six or seven of these. How hard is it to get through that last couple? It's tough. It's yeah. tough. Yeah. It's tough. How are you tough. drinking? Is this the first time you've had a non water beverage with the DP? No. Okay. What? No. Oh. Well, I didn't know if it was only water. Like, you're not supposed to drink so. anything else. Okay. And you're supposed to like put in like more salt into your food so you retain the water and then on the day of the trip you're supposed to drink no water which is crazy because it's a travel day and I like yeah. you always get dehydrated but then like oh and then I'm supposed to hit the sauna which I'll talk about in a second uh, so I'm, I'm hitting the sauna and you're supposed to like retain the water but then flush it all out on your, like, your non-water day and then when you get to the when you touch down at your destination you do a little pump and then like you don't <laughs> eat like you, you do a Larry eating disorder yeah, yeah. until like dinner Got it. and then you're supposed to look fucking sick which like, I'm noticeably, sure you'll look better like, yeah, like uh, you, naked. You blow it up with the water, and then it like all flushes out. Nice, basically. I should try this. But like what? Like every three. Well, days? when you're gone, I'm not going to be. I'm not going to be. Well, I have. A, I have a big task, which we'll get to later. But like ultimately, like why not just try to play along or something? I guess you'll be off it by then. But what else am I going to do? When I go on vacation, are you in your head? You're on vacation. Yeah, hundred percent. Okay. And we've like. <laughs> well, but but what? What should it be? I, I guess it's better, yeah, that you don't touch anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. God forbid Larry breaks everything. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, on the water flush, baby, it is. I might have to pause, I might have to pause mid pod to piss. Pause I mean, mid pod to piss. That happens. You know, I could fucking carry. That's the one thing I could do is uh, not shut the fuck up for extended periods of time. Wait, so what's the sauna? You went, so you go to the sauna every day also? <sighs> All right. So. At the climbing gym I go to, which is already any climbing gym is like fucking grody. But you go right? to the fancy one. Mm, you've said only, it. You only because the, you've the said dirt, it before. The dirtbag one shut down. But what happened was the workers at the fancy one unionized, and that place has gone to fucking hell in a handbag. Wait, so you want to break the union? No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying Bust that, like, that shit. I'm just saying like, fellas, like, how about we switch up the routes Wait, a little so are more they frequently? Striking? Talking. What? No, they're they're just unionized, so they can't be. They can't get in trouble. I see. And they're just doing less work. So no consequences for it's their actions. It's fair, mm -hmm. and I support the route setters union. But it's also like, come on, let's fucking let's switch it up a little bit here. Let's let's clean the bathrooms, maybe. Do you normally? Because yo, at the I know you don't go to the gym. No, dude, you white boys be fucking shitting. At oh the yeah. Gym. <laughs> I don't know. What. How do you you can you know who's shitting? You look at their ankles. Well, it's all white people. Okay, <laughs> at the climbing gym. 
Well, it's it's like no, it's individual. There's only a few like bathrooms, and then you just walk. Like somebody walks out, you walk in, and they're just like fucking skid marks on the bowl everywhere. It Do smells not crazy. Go in there. Mad big protein farts. Too. Nice. Um, okay, so the place has a sauna, which I've never visited before. Usually, it's just like get in there, climb, leave. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I was told like, yo, hit the sauna. It'll help you like lose all this water and like really fucking the cum mm-hmm. gutters will be like razor razor sharp. <laughs> um, I was asking around because I've, I've made some friends there um, at the gym. Yeah, I have a little little squadron. <laughs> What's that crew like? <laughs> It's, it's guys you know, like oh, it's okay, guys in the okay, men's sorry, world. Sorry, sorry, yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah. sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to be so rude. Yeah, what the fuck. No, but it is true. Like most rock climbers are like disgusting individuals. Right. You know, like a lot of like white people with dreadlocks, a lot of she they bar- blue hair baristas, Trustafarians. Sure, a lot of like hacky sack motherfuckers. Um, a bunch of M dot R's, <laughs> a lot of M dot R's, that type of shit. So the song is always. I've always been like, what the fuck? Like, what's the deal up there? Right? Like, oh, it's wanna, like its own. It's like, like it, I want to do the sauna because like it's good for you and it feels good. But like, and it's free if you're a member, right? So you've never even deigned to cross the threshold. It's like you got to go there. You got to change. You got to do your shit. You got, then you got to change the bathing suit. You got to have like, uh, you know, like kind of like water shoes. That's like, the like, bathing suit that's in the bathroom. That's the sauna. Yeah, did you piss suit. on that too? No. Like you, you, it's like taking a shower in college, right? It you is a like, piss yellow bathing suit, though. Yeah. <laughs> you need like uh you, like water shoes, right? Right. Flippy floppies or whatever. Um, then you got to change back out. Whatever. So normally you're so, you're in and out. And I had heard I was like, yo, rock climbing people are those annoying type of whites. So it's like, hey brother, come join us. They're like overly peppy, overly friendly, mm. you know that type of shit. I don't like that. So that's people that like when you're, I don't know about you, but the few times I've used a sauna, I don't want to have conversation with naked and or half naked men. Right. And usually the sauna, it's like not with rock climber people. It's with like, you know, like gym people or like you're at a, you're at like the, the standard in Miami or whatever. The Germans that we played roulette with. Oh, sex freaks. Yeah. Oh, you're at the gay sauna. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, which like, yo, sucking dick in a sauna has got to be a lot of work. I, I wouldn't know. I feel, yeah. I guess I mean, I'm sitting in and I can barely move. I can't imagine fucking Bob, yeah. you know, getting that Glock, Glock 9000. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> finally, I'm like, all Put right. Put the I, hot dog on a roller. I got to get in there. Got to get in there. Um, I'd heard that, like, at the time I go in the mornings, it's kind of empty, but I forgot that today's a holiday. It's President's Day. Yep. And so it's like more crowded than normal. I open the door, it's absolutely full. The only available space in this, like, pretty small sauna, like, it's probably like an eight person capacity, but there's already like nine or 10 people in there. There's people standing. I'm surprised you then even were like, fuck it. I'll do it too. I opened the door. I wasn't going to like turn around. I was like shirtless on the fucking cold roof. I was like, I just got to do it. Um, the only available space, there was like a fucking very clear, like ass and like balls sweat mark <laughs> nice, dude. where I'm like, I got to sit in someone else's fucking butt puddle now. Yeah. That's and like a gooch puddle. Yeah. And just like <laughs> commit. Commit to the fucking cornhole uh, dampness. Oh my god, that's gross, <laughs> horrendous! And like, I'm like this close to like touching the guy's knee next to me. Mm. Like a girl comes in, she's like, "Oh, can I get in the corner behind you?" Unisex sauna. Yeah, so people are in bathing suits, so she's like scrunched up right, in the corner. Right, right. People are dripping sweat. Um, it's fucking horrendous. And like again, it's the combination of like rock climbing people who are a bad, bad bunch. <laughs> Again, the worst type Bad of white, actors, the, yeah. the worst type of white person or like white liberal where it's like, yeah, come on, come on. We got room for let's another. Hang out. Let's hang out. Don't just w- just wipe that gooch puddle aside. Like, get on in here, brother. Yeah. Just splash that gooch puddle away and you'll be good. You know, honestly, did you is it the uh, you have the water, the ladle? You should have ladled the gooch sweat. Mm. Right. Yeah, I think honestly, I wanted. The or is gooch- it digital? Is it a digital sauna? No, no, no. It's there's the sp- spoon yeah. shit. I wanted the gooch sweat because like, you know, like. No, you, you need didn't. like the the ba- the good bacteria to like you know help you acclimate. Right, you're you're basically enhancing your immunity. Yeah, by marinating in a pit of ooze like right. a fucking teenage mutant ninja dirtbag. Yes. Um. So TBD if my taint mutates and gets superpowers of its own and starts fucking spitting webs at you or whatever. Can you do me a favor? What's up? Because I think that this is this will be not just for me but for the audience at home. When you come back from Jamaica and we talk about your trip, I would love to know if this um flush. And if you do, you know, do it by the letter. I don't know how you're not going to drink any liquids on the flight. That's, oh. But anyway, I'm, well, I'm not going to drink seven Miller Lights. That's for damn sure. Because I won't be in first class. Yeah. Um. But I would love to know uh, when you're back, if like on that first day, you were like, I look like a golden god. Sure. 
Um, Because then I I feel like that's an easily replicable thing that anyone at home could be like, yeah, I should. Because I don't prepare at all for a trip. No, this is the first time I'm doing this. Only because the guy's like, hey, this is what you should do to like look really good. I'm like, okay. I mean, you know, you got to trust a trainer. Yeah. Trust the trainers, baby. No carbs, only protein and leafy greens for a few days. Um, How's your shit? How's my poops? Yeah. Great. Okay. On that fucking keto shit. I mean, look, I had, did I go to Bernie's last night and go fucking buck wild with five of the homies? Yes. Was that the last supper? Uh, that was just kind of like, yo, I, I haven't been doing much all weekend except like productivity around the house type shit. Um, friends want to hang out cause today is a holiday for them. Right. 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 Not for us. Cause we're fucking grinding. No, dude. We're such fucking hustle grind set motherfuckers. You know, dude, we don't take any time off. And I had to hit fucking big O cause they, you know, you, they knew I had the, the Bernie's plug. They wanted to go to the gutter at six o'clock. And I was like, how do you guys want to go to Bernie's and said like, like to get play p- uh, to bowl to bowl? I yeah. was going to say play pool. Do they have pool at the gutter? I forget. Probably yeah. at this one. They do. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but. But what was really nice uh-huh. is and we're talking a lot about me, I know, but um, you know, these old guys, like the old homies, it's like, yo, the daughter takes a photo of the agenda that the crew is going to like go through when they go to the bar, the run of show for the fellows hang. And it goes viral every time. And it's always just like, do you believe that's real? I think originally. Yes. Now I'm not so sure. Cause it was like, right. Aaron, it, the first one went viral in September. It was like Aaron Rodgers injury. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Pre- preparing the lawn for winter like that's <laughs> yeah, yeah. shit good dad shit yeah um <laughs> <laughs> yeah that agenda was awesome dude so me and my friends we started doing one and we had one last night and it, i swear to god I, it really whose idea was this just the fucking brain trust of the fellas as like a novelty thing or because like at this point you guys were maybe you know straining to enjoy yourselves in each other's company no 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 um i can't can you can you share this yeah agenda? yeah i mean I'll, i'm gonna re- some, what, what you can share. i'm gonna redact a bunch like a bunch of names and like private Please do details. i would love to hear these prompts because by the way this is what you and i do for yeah. this because we're pros like we said we but grind it, we hustle we prepare it is and again like i'll order it in a way where it's like everyone gets this it's kind of like it's exactly. Like wait, wait, wait! You're you're the minutes keeper, kind of. You're the secretary. I'm the secretary. Um, I'm not keeping the minutes. Right. Sorry. Whatever. But uh, I am like trying to spread out the conversation so like everyone gets a chance to like, oh, the focus is on you now. The focus is on you now. The focus is on you now. Um, oh, so it's equitable sure it's, like, conversation. Flowing. Yeah, make sure it's like there's like flow to it where it's like it starts light, gets a little deeper. You know, we we land at dessert. When is the appropriate time to like fucking tie? Like, okay, we're moving on now. We're off this, or is it just kind of by the feel? When it just kind of fucking peters out. Yeah, and like I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna like be a Nazi and or a fascist and be like, oh, actually, stick to the topic, stick to the topics. <laughs> um, so last night, first up, food. Got to figure out the food menu. <laughs> that, why does that have to be that obvious? That's implied, yeah, no, right? No, because we were getting the gender. It was like, oh, shit, we got to talk food first. Okay, all right. Uh, <laughs> next up, Dick Sucking Ron was at McSorley's for their 170th anniversary, so we needed a McSorley scene report. Why did he go? He was just in the area, walking past it, him and uh, Mrs. Dick Sucking Ronette. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> I forgot that we called this on Dick Sucking Ron Jr. on yeah. the podcast. <laughs> Dick sucking Rhonda, and uh, <laughs> and they're just like walking by and like yo, like let's let's check it out. It looks we haven't been in a minute. Were they it's, with the kid? No, no, no. Okay, Dick sucking Ron. So they did was, a, they did a day date at McSorley's one seventieth. Yeah. What was the what was the biggest takeaway about that? Uh, I haven't been at McSorley's in McSorley's in so long, dude. The biggest takeaway was that they were very efficient with the seating. Oh, that's the nice. staff itself, and we're, everyone just so hammered. <laughs> <laughs> it's a ticketed gala at and there's Orleans. and there's free cake but it and it looked like just like grocery store cake but it was actually from Venero's another East Village institution right that's been around for 130 years that's my family's go-to I actually had mini cannolis from them on Friday night at a family dinner oh delicious oh how did that whole uh, by the way how did that ordering process go when I saw you you were fucking scressed yeah it was fine it was fine uh I did realize the cannoli yeah one of the few foods that I think is better in its miniature form there's a lot of things. Well, hmm, good point. What else? Muffins, cupcakes? Damn, like- I was going to say, yo. All right. Don't fucking kill me. I love pigs in a blanket. And Ugh. I might rather have them than hot dogs. Straight up. If I'm going, if I was, if we're going, going glizzy, I mean, that's, no, I, I, I don't know. If well, I it's different because it's puff pastry versus bun. I know, but it's the right? puff pastry better. Yeah, because it's all just butter and fat. Though one thing that bums me out is uh, I love I'm a big relish guy, sweet relish, okay. and uh, whenever there are pigs at a blanket at any fucking occasion, fancy or otherwise, no one has uh, a side of relish to dip in, right? Eyor, it's mustard. Well, bro, when I'm gonna travel with relish in my bag, like I'm fucking even whiter Hillary Clinton. Come yeah. on, get out of here, bro. She Irish got, Hillary Clinton. He got relish in his bag. Swag. <laughs> okay, all right, next up, uh, updates from my friend's restaurant. 
Oh, very important. Very important. Um, then first question, what's the drink of spring? What did Allison say? She said it was like cheap, like Miller Lite, which you Ugh, that's right. cemented then, on that flight. So I guess I was incepted because we were both. Well, she loves Bud Light and we, 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 right. we, we razzed her well, about she was that. Like, Wear, drink whatever you want. You don't right, have right, to feel right, like right. you have to have like the, I mean, martinis, dunzo. We know that. Especially mm-hmm. martinis. <laughs> Unless you're trying to poop yourself. Did the uh, did the fellas come to a consensus on nah. the drink of spring? What nah. did you throw out? Because you know me. Amaretto sour all day. All right. Yeah. All day. Well, it's not this drink of the summer. It's drink of the spring. Wow. So we're going to have another drink of the summer. Well, because that's like its own. That's like song of the summer. That's a right. whole separate. That's the king of seasons. I don't remember what I said. Uh, you don't even remember? No. This is why you do need someone taking minutes. I know. Okay. Next up, it was um, somebody's dog's birthday. <laughs> then... Um, <laughs> Somebody's bro. That's a gift to that person that that got added to the agenda. Did they throw a party for the dog? No, but it was like the uh, one year, uh, one year oh. anniversary of their adoption. Okay. That's oh, well, they get a fucking tattoo of the dog's fucking emoji. Don't fucking talk about <laughs> my fucking ink, brother. Uh, wait, uh, what's the, how's it been? How's the year? Great. Good. They love her. Great. Yeah. Next I up was, wish uh, I knew what that was like. Next up was one of the dog owners. It's a couple. Um, she got a new haircut. So we wanted to hear, <laughs> We want to hear the husband's thoughts. <laughs> this is a fellow's only thing, right? No, uh, there were two SOs there, two female was SOs. The, was the woman with the new haircut there? Yeah. yeah. And it was like, where'd you go? What was the reference photos? Then we started talking about like the husband, how he should maybe switch his shit up. <laughs> Again, it's just like- No, this is, this is I, honestly, this is beautiful and I love this. Yeah. And I wish this was recorded. It is recorded for, right no, now. No, no, I wish this was recorded for a Friday fiasco. Oh. Right about then is when Dick Sucking Ron spilled a, mart- a whole martini on me. Um, the next topic Bro, was what? I wonder if now I spilled on you in Vegas amongst many oh, spills. Luck. Then Dick sucking Ron spilled on you. No, oh, I me. Yeah, I'm the, no, and you might be some type of spill magnet. Wait, me. what kind of martini? Like a dream? I'm the problem. It's me. Ooh, Hi. Yeah. Thanks. I appreciate you acknowledging my uh, taste in great uh, music. What yeah, it's ca- dirty gym martini. Oh, that's did that ruin your night? No, not at all. What was he, how apologetic? Was he? Great, but it was fine. If it was red wine, different story. Well, but that it, sucks. But a dirty martini is wasn't that dirty. Okay. It's just clear. It's just like on like a shirt and like right. my black. So it's vodka. Gin. Gin. Yeah. Mm, little stinky. Okay. Yeah. Moving on. Whatever, I'll get a dry clean. Uh next up, this might be interest of viewers at home. <laughs> James getting a dog. Oh, that's right. I forgot that we like broached this very heavily um at one of our group lunches in Vegas. I think I'm ready, fellas. You're finally ready. Um Yes, but the timing isn't going to work out until because we have a lot of shit coming up. So like, and every time I'm like, okay, here's like a four month period where I'll be able to like, mm-hmm. you know, bond for and sure, like mold its personality absolutely. Because I think I want a puppy, um, but then it's like, nope, fucking another huge bag coming our way via some travel or whatever. But have, not, have you thought about like whether you are going to adopt or buy or what kind of dog or anything? Like, where are we at in the process? We're just, just like size and like vibe. Just just planting the seeds. Yeah. Again, I'm not one of those guys. That's like, here's what every breed is. How many dogs are in this building? Because I know this, this building is a dog lot, friendly. A lot, a lot. There's a lot. Okay. Uh, next up was Dick Sucking Ron Jr. updates. Okay. Next up was another homies updates on their dog. Um, <laughs> Wait, then, so we got we got real parents and we got some dink wads. Yeah. Then the we got mix. some pupper pa- pupper daddies. Uh, f- my fr- let me update you guys. My fur baby. <laughs> um, next up, uh, s- one of the SOs there is a professional flautist like Andre 3000. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we asked her, What's new in Woodwinds? Turns out a lot. <laughs> a lot. Such as, like, for example, there's like new I mean, technology. Yo, <laughs> we, I rewatched Black Swan recently, and you did too, right? I, not recently, recently, but with probably in the, I mean, check the, check the box. Um, so oh, your so, letter box did come up. Same social media handles and all, but did you review? You didn't review it though, but you did. I didn't bring it up and I didn't review it, but, then but it ha- came up. Then how do you, my, my letter box came up with the group. Yeah. What? Cause you're like, Larry watches movies just to get a quip off and he's a piece of shit. No, I didn't say that. Okay. What did you Someone say? else said that? <laughs> no, they were like, uh, yo, other guy in the group, you haven't been updating your shit. Cause he was talking about how he'd just seen she's all that. At Ooh. a daytime matinee. I and wonder actually, what that, how that uh, rewatches. Apparently, fantastic. Yeah, and they were just they just said that you watch too many movies. I mean, that's a completely fair take, and but also that's a subjective and one. And they said your quips weren't that funny. Um, next up was uh, there's a new celebrity website. I don't know the name of it, but apparently just tracks like all the work they've had done on their face. It's not new, but like it's like making the rounds. It's like a viral thing. What is it called? I'll, I'll figure it out. Okay. Um, Wait, I'm so, so someone was shitting on my fucking letterbox. Yeah, 
Well, I'm going to find out who that is off record, and okay. I'm going to have some uh, some strong words for them. Here's a question for the viewers at home. How close is too close to a crocodile? Who added that one? Was that you? No. Someone just threw in, like, just like a kind of Slash hypothetical. Bear. Well, so how close is too close to get to a crocodile? Are, croc- are crocodiles the ones that are, like, mad fast? Crocodiles are more dangerous than alligators. I think alligators are, I don't know, like maybe alligators in the U.S. And fact crocodile is like a Nile thing. Yeah, and like there's like saltwater crocodiles in fucking Papua New Guinea. Yo, Loki, I feel like I'd rather be closer to the bear because... No, no, no it's, not, it's not crocodile or bear. It's, no, 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 I know. I'm okay. saying I think I want to be closer to the bear because with the bear, you just get into a ball and that's the whole thing, right? You get down mm-hmm. and you play some you like... Fight, some you fight back. Fight back with a bear? Not the grizzly. You must never. You must destroy this tape. <laughs> you must never listen to this, dude. dude R.I.P. to the grizzly man, bro. Um, I, I mean, I don't want to be close to either of these things ever, dude. It's but how close fun. is too close? Uh, like I think, like a mile. <laughs> okay, I yeah. think a crocodile, like, uh, like where the camera is, way too close. Where well, the back wall is, borderline too close. I'm gonna, say like, your, I'm gonna say your bedroom, which have, people have no idea because they have, they don't know the inside. My apartment's apartment. huge. No, I'm gonna say no. The cro- bro, the croc, crocs are scary because they'll like death roll you. Nah, I, dude, I think it's just this. I think it's a speed thing. Yeah, I think crocs will always kill you. Bears can like, if there's no cub and if they're not like threatened or not hungry, like they might just be like. What you up? have a better chance of becoming homies and bonding with the mammal than a reptile. The right. reptile, they don't fuck. It's literally, fuck it's us. literally cold blooded. Cold blooded. <laughs> okay. If you could be on one game show, what would you pick? Jeopardy. Excluding Jeopardy. Fuck. Obviously. Um, is my goal to win? It's just, I think it was just to like, what would it be, what would be the most fun? Was how I oh, took we, this Wheel of Fortune, probably, right? I mean, I know these are the, those are the top two in the game. Okay. Uh, what other? I mean, Family Feud would be fun. Oh, Family Feud would and then be who, so and then fun. Who would, your, who would your team be? It's five. Fab five. Duh. No, but it's, it's your family. So it's like your brother, is no, it no. fucking Michael, is it Mit- Mitski, like... It's the Fab Five, it's my family. Which is what? Me, you, Robbie, Sham, no. Chuck. Okay. Oh, okay, I see what you're Jesus doing Jesus Christ. Dude. But we wouldn't win. Catch up. <laughs> but no, we clearly wouldn't. not! What the, what the fuck was this? Damn, dude. Who from your family would you have at Family Feud? Well, my family is four people already, right? But you can have like aunts, uncles, nah, your transgender yeah. grandmother, like you can have these people. I'm going to stick nuclear and then, well, my grandmother can't hear for shit, so I don't know how good she would be. Okay. Um, hmm. Who would be my, f- it's five? So your parents, your brother. And me. You. So you're uh, fifth. Is it your wife? Is it oh, your yeah, yeah, yeah. brother's? Oh, wow, embarrassing. Yeah, Jenna. Yeah, what the fuck? Jenna. <laughs> Jenna. <laughs> I, well, because, you know, Damn. she's not a Schlossman. I mean, she is, she, you know. Ooh. Well, she didn't take my last name. Ooh. We'll talk about Valentine's Day later. No, shout out my wife. She's so great. Okay, next up was, uh, we have a little boys trip. The boys are going to the DR in yeah. March. Yo, can I say something? Yeah. I feel like, all right, I'm not going to go crazy grievance mode, but I would like to bring this up. Right? What's up? I felt like, whether it was like for the show or maybe... Half real because every joke ultimately has a nugget of truth, right? I got a lot of flack for Jenna's 40th birthday trip, right? I was just going through the calendar today. You got this vacation. You got the fucking next vacation. What about you taking all these vacations? What days am I taking off? Uh, I guess not pod days technically. Thursdays and Fridays mainly. And occasional Wednesday. When do we record boys onlys? Monday. But yo, look at the Vegas one that came out on Wednesday, and that was a great. That was yeah, because the because ho- the hotel. Yeah, we didn't have a guest up that week. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, we're at the point now, and, and you're not wrong. But I thought we were living in a world now where you and I, and I don't know if we've shared this, we are being flexible with the schedule. Listen, if you pay for content, you're always going to get it, right? right? But like, ultimately, you and I, we used to feel shackled to the schedule, and it's like, why? And I feel like we've broken those chains in, in 2024. Yeah, uh, and I think the. Two week trip to Miami kind of like was the impetus to like really it's seven re- days re- one, one but two, week but two Mondays. Yeah, okay. That's it. That's okay. it. That's right, it. Moving on to uh, moving through the to the DR. Oh Not- yeah. So how what's uh what are the vibes there? Everyone's excited, I'm sure. Especially motherfuckers with the kids. Yeah. I'm sure they're ready to fucking see you later. Yeah. Dump really them on got, that, so. We didn't really spend that much time on that on this uh trip, to be honest. Um it was just kind of like there's some people that are like on the fence. Can they make it happen with work? Can they not make it happen? Uh it's just like a big villa near the beach private chef which i'm very excited about that'll be great honestly group trips the worst 
most like drama filled component of a group trip is the food. Hundred percent. Big big group meals. Ooh. Planning the menu every night. Shopping takes a lot of time. Who's cooking? Yeah. Like why don't they like why don't the food preparers get like extra love or extra whatever? Yeah. Cleaning takes a fucking ass load of time. Some people like have different cleaning styles than others. This is just like, yo, pay the fucking extra bit. Uh, have some staff in there. And this is going to be the first time we ever do this. And I'm very much looking forward to it because it frees up a lot of time for the people that normally be stuck in the motherfucking kitchen. Absolutely. Here's a general question for you as the caretaker, as a caretaker person. That's your personality type, right? Sure. Right. Caretaker of the pod, caretaker of your own family to some degree, caretaker of the friend group. Here you are. You know, you made the agenda for everyone. Did you plan this trip? Did you run point? No. So the way we do it is I started this tradition. Uh, there's 14 of us. Every year, a different boy takes the lead oh, in planning the vacay. Who fucked it up the worst? So far, it's been all good. So I okay, did a, I did like a big house out in like the desert, I like in California. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Then we did a trip to New Orleans. New Orleans. New Orleans. Then this is number three. Oh, so... We're only into the third year. Yeah. So, so we got 11 more. Before so I was going to say, so, so there's 11 people. Someone could bozo this. They could bungle it. Yeah. And then like, uh, and then whoever, Dude, it's leads, stressful. whoever leads the trip picks the next year's leader. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. I don't know. Like, I'm sure a lot of the audience has had to do this where it's like planning a trip, whether it's for your family or friends or planning the bachelor party. This is like my nightmare. Yeah. You couldn't do it. Not even for my own bachelor party. Like, you know, my, you know, my boys who were planning it. Um, of which you did no planning, but um, I would. They're like asking me stuff, and I'm like, I don't even want to like just like know. be like yes or no or no, not even like surprise me. It's like I just woof, yeah. shit is fuck. It gives me anxiety, dude. Yeah, you're not anyway. a planner. No, <laughs> no, not uh, at all. Next up, even when surrounded by people, do you ever get lonely? <sighs> had to hit, you got to have a deep one in there. The last time you had it was uh, have you started thinking about your parents' deaths? Wait, 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 wait. This is the second time you've run the agenda with the fellas. Yeah, the first time was. Have you ever, have you started, have you fellas started thinking about your parents' deaths? Because uh, luckily, inshallah, no one's had a parental unit figure die. Damn. That I know of. Um, Shit, that's so going to be was, tough. Even when surrounded by people, do you ever get lonely? Don't think about my parents dying. And I don't know, dude. I, I like to, I'm emotional, but I'm not deep. That tracks, right? I yeah. guess not I can get deep. No, I, I honestly, um. His whole thing. Oh, he watches too many movies. I love time alone. I really do. I guess so. That's like escapism. Like, t- yeah. yeah. So I'm not like thinking about. So I got a little fucking bone to pick with you. Go off, King. Shut up, bone crusher. I ain't never scared. Yeah, I'll try to get on. Yep, you're going to about um, to criticize me. You claim that you don't look at your phone when you're watching movies. And yet on the plane, you were doing both simultaneously, which again, I think is totally normal and fine. It's just that like. It's crazy that you're like, yeah, I put in ten. Th- I put in literally ten thousand hours watching movies this year. It's like, no, you didn't. You were on your phone for six thousand of those hours. Wow, that is a bold claim. Um, I was watching Hacksaw Ridge, very violent. Which, uh, dude, it's amazing. Scorsese, Mel Gibson. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, that was like the that ba- man, that Jew hater can direct a film. But uh, that was like the the comeback, and like there was a like his quote unquote comeback a film, and there was a lot of uh, he's got a lot of Oscar nominations. Yeah. Andrew Garfield, most famously, Best Picture. Um, definitely, he did not get nominated for Best Director, I believe. Um, damn, dude, fucking crying with that one. That one was fucking. You're crying on the plane. Well, you know, just like I, I. I get emotional during movies, not because I love movies so much. It's just like that. I don't know. It's just like the well, especially on the plane. Yeah. Uh, next up, we were talking about one of our boys has a wedding this summer. Okay. Talk about that. Then we talk about self checkouts. Um, oh shit! I was gonna say something, but I'm not gonna say that. How's the wedding planning going? It's going better. It's going great. Going better. <laughs> it's going great. They're, <laughs> no, out, they're, I, I, they're I, out of the weeds. They're out of the weeds. Out of the weeds. Yeah. Good. The big pieces are in place. Mm-hmm. Now it's just kind of like the you know literal icing on the cake. Um, next up, self checkouts. Thoughts. Hate them. Hate them. Well, it depends. Bro, every time there's a sitch where then I got to get the fucking person. So I'd rather just go wait in line, even though I hate lines, and just not have to worry about it. Yeah. I hate self-checkout. Yeah. Though I guess it's easier to then steal shit, which is, is good for people. Yeah. I'm, I'm all for that. Right. I lo- uh, you should steal in the airport. Um, and uh, yeah, you should steal from Dwayne Reed, CVS's, Walmart's, fuck corporations. I think there's a sweet spot where it's like... um. Well, I love the grab and go at the Super Bowl, which we, I don't know if we ever really talked about this, but like oh, yeah, yeah, you yeah. check in with your credit card and then you just walk out with beers. Yeah, it's fire. And they like automatically know what to charge you, I assume. I've only done the grab and go um, at MSG and I did also find it um, 
quite efficient and liberating because those are lines with like drunk, annoying sports fans. Like that's like a, a, right. a there's a lot of bad lines. All lines are bad. Um, thin blue ones, drunk sports fans ones. All lines, Lawrence. All lines. I'm trying, what, what am I missing? What we can keep it. We can keep it. No, no. What did what did I miss? What's like? What's a good like a line to thin blue one? Oh, thin, yeah. oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Why do you got to do that? I mean, bro, I you did it yourself. Um, okay, anyway, but yeah, yeah. I, I'm not a self. I think there's guy. a sweet spot with self checkouts. One one item, cashier. Four to five, three to six, self checkout. Six plus cashier. What? Did, I don't know, man. One. You got you got to push. Yeah, because it's just like, yo, One is easy. y'all want this Pepsi for a self-checkout? You got to push like eight buttons in a self-checkout. Yeah. Where it's like, ready to pay, paying, credit card, no bag. Who's lazy now, That dude. type of shit. Yeah. No, Definitely I'm, no I'm booze. Efficient. I'm not doing any because that's, you're going to get ID'd no, anyway, no, no, right? No. Unless it's this shit, the grab and goes now. They're, yeah. They just trust you. So so if you're just like. No, they don't. Try, you got to you got to try ID when you go in there. Uh, you don't try oh, ID. Oh, just to get in line. At the grab and go with got the beers, it, got yeah. It, got it, got it. I, the one at MSG that I did was just for a uh, snack ski, so was, there was oh, no, okay. there was no alcohol. So I guess it's kind of pointless. Uh, last or penultimate agenda item: Why do they have mattress sales on President's Day weekend? And there actually is a historical answer to this. Is it because this this country was founded on the principle of going to the fucking mattresses? Second Amendment, right to bear arms. Let's go. No, it's something about like that's when like the trade cycle happened and he had to like offload shit. I don't know. When were mattresses even fucking invented, dude? I don't know. Did they always, I guess they were, there was, it's more than just mattresses. It's like other shit. And back in the day, what you just like, you just had a, a bag filled with hay. And yeah. Was like, like uh, your temper pedic. Yeah. Or you just like slept on your slave. I don't know. It's like, whoa, no. Hey, it's American no, no, no. history. Uh, they had their own quarters. My right. friend. Um, it's something like that's when the boats came in from England. So like, that's when you had to offload the new shit and get rid of the old inventory. I don't know. Who's your favorite president? I don't have one. Who's your favorite president's child? Hunter. It's Hunter. <laughs> Hunter. I was gonna say one of one of the whichever one of the Bush's parties. Those. Girls, I was gonna say I think the Bush girls are fire too. I bet they'd be fucking fun to hang out with for sure. Good hang. Well, Hunter Biden obviously great hang. I like to hang out with all three. Chelsea and most of the Trump kids at the bottom. Baron? I don't know. Baron might be. Baron you could like hoop with and like you like show I, you like how to work the dark web. I mean, that dude is so acoustic. There's no way he has even though. I guess with playing video games, you get a hand eye coordination. But that man does not have an athletic bone in his body, which is funny because Trump is like sneaky athletic. I know we're going to talk Trump sneakers later. Tiffany would be. I assume that she doesn't just, even count, bro. Well, she's ugly. So she's got to be funny. Shout out Lucas for that joke. Um <laughs> She's got to be. Or, I'm, or, I'm hanging this. Or, I'm or hanging what? this on. I'm hanging this on the professor's. <laughs> that's his albatross. Bam, dude. Uh, last item on the agenda: dessert. What do you guys go with? Well, we they gave us free. They gave us an ice cream sundae and the uh, ice so, box lemon pie. That's a lot of spoons. Those, it was, yeah, I actually, six. Since I'm not a sweet tooth guy, I do sometimes like just want just give me one bite. I mean, that's really what the um, amaretto sour is all about. Like a little, you know, digestive, yeah, little sweet, <laughs> a little sweet treat after the fact. But um, the okay. worst was mint chocolate chip ice cream. That was I, I haven't had that in years. It's my, is that your favorite? It's one of my favorites. Yeah. It tastes like fucking chemicals. Nah, it tastes like the like, vat of acid that Jack Nicholson fell into and became the Joker. Yeah. A lot of people say it's a toothpaste cereal or a cereal uh, ice cream. Excuse yeah, me. Yeah, Disgusting. Um, I'm going to go, I mean, this is very, very vanilla. I'm going to go vanilla one and then mint chocolate chip probably my second favorite. Ugh. If we're not getting into like crazy, like whatever fucking concoction they were cu cooking up in Vermont in some fucking Basically, lab. You know? Everyone was like, uh, had there was six spoons and everyone's kind of like working their way around the mint chocolate chip. Really? Yeah. No one was a fan. Just trying to get some brownie and some whipped cream and some chocolate and vanilla. If I was at the dinner, things would have gone down differently. <laughs> Give me that full fucking scoop. Just rotated it to the. Scoops in front of you. Yeah. Um, yeah. So again, agenda. Great little addition to have when you're doing dinner with the fellas and the fellettes. Um, it's like I. It help. It helps the conversation. Like there's no. I see both sides. You can predetermine where it's going to go, so you don't get hung up like, oh, like what about fucking Gaza or what about the All Star game? Like none of that shit. <laughs> you know, it well, really is just definitely like definitely not the All Star game. Yeah, it really is just like. The e scored over 200. That's insane. Um, it helps. Yeah, it's the NBA All Star. No one plays defense. And like, by the way, we were cycle. We were like updating this. I I put out like a, a first draft, and then there were like additions throughout the day. 
or like in the two hours leading up to it. So it's like people, you have things you want to talk about with your friends. This is so you make sure that you get to talk about them with with your homies and like you don't actually put them off until the next time you hang out. Right, right. Or like, you know, for example, someone doesn't bogart the conversation and speak so loud that nobody else can get a word in otherwise. There's that too. I've heard of I've heard of that happening sometimes, which is crazy. Uh, yeah, yeah, I can't even, I mean, it couldn't be me, dude. Uh, speaking of bogarting the fucking narrative, let's talk about Trump at SneakerCon. Yeah, dude. Um, All right, some quick details. Oh, the yeah. Never Surrender High Top. <laughs> um, there were a thousand pairs made for four, 399 bucks a pop. Um, it was his name licensed to right. <laughs> 45 footwear or some shit. Uh, a signed pair sold at SneakerCon in Philadelphia for $9,000. There's Wild. currently a pair on eBay for $45,000. Signed is- or unsigned? I'm not sure, but I think they just made it like 45. I was going to say, it seems like it's a bit. Uh, it looks, on it looks like a swastika. That's yeah, why. yeah. Um, what are your thoughts? This on This is the Trump. This is right out of the Trump playbook, right? He's been licensing his name since before he was getting into politics. Trump stakes, baby. And everything is. And what's amazing is that. And I guess it's again, like who his audience has kind of always been the product, at least from my understanding. And these sneakers definitely uh, will make this true. It's all dog shit. Yeah, like there's no way a Trump steak ever tasted good or I don't know whatever else. he Trump fucking wine. Saw. There's a Trump vineyard. How bad is that? I wonder. We should, we should get some. I wonder. First of all, should we get a pair of these sneakers? And do an in-person. They're all sold review. out. They We're, sold oh, out. They oh, instantly. Okay. Flash drop. Yeah. The uh, well, they just. I mean, this is what everyone was saying, and I agree. They literally made like a creative recreation. Yeah. Like, who? Who? Like a Hulk Hogan creative. Like, I wonder who does. Like, I don't know what 45, oh, 45 footwear. Wait, is that not then forty five because of him? Is this all like a well, weird, like, you know, shell uh, company situation? Uh, wait, wait, join Trump's wait, sneaker go. community, be a part of history. We're on the website. Wait, does he have a Discord? No, no, no. Um, let's I'm see. Like, every, <laughs> every CIC Ventures LLC. So I don't know what the every deal is Discord with. is a Trump Discord besides ours. Yeah, low key. Frequently asked question um, where are they made? China, right? Gotta be, which is hilarious. Each pair, um, yeah, they're made to order, allegedly. Wow. When will they ship? You know, they use the, the, the TF uh, merch model. Trump sneakers are expected to start shipping July 2024. And then for the, the white knit and red wave knit, like the fucking the runners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. August 2024. Do you remember when they did the um speaking of fucking lines and fucking cops? Remember the thin blue line? Like yeah. where like this is not it's funny to see, you know, reactionary motherfuckers tap into sneaker culture. Like, why do you think that? Because okay, this is just two examples, but like, is it because like Sneakerheads and the sneaker enthusiast community apologize if any of you are listening. Is it just like okay, these are dumb mouth breathers? We they'll can buy anything. Eas- we can <laughs> yeah, they'll buy anything. We can easily manipulate them. But this wasn't like a money play. Like we did the math. The math isn't like what four hundred thousand dollars. Like for that's the nothing. Well, Trump did. So if Trump likes getting his name, sued for right now, oh okay. well, he got uh, the penalty incurred is three hundred fifty million. If he appeals and he has to, I believe, put up one hundred twenty percent, so it's four hundred fifty million. Whew. So. He might have got like a mill to like license his name. So that's he's a one, signing bonus. Yeah, one three hundred fiftieth of the way there. Damn, dude. Um, CIC Ventures LLC, I guess, just made four hundred thousand gross off the sale. Right, of right, 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 right. But yeah, it's like our fucking. I mean, you you go to any sneakerhead con, sneaker con, <laughs> yeah. And you're like, these are rare. They're like, oh, give me, take my money. Take yeah, my fucking please, money. Please, please, I mean, you know, it's a battleground state. I understand. First of all, what is <laughs> the average age of the sneaker con goer? I don't think they can vote, probably. He's like fucking 12-year-old boys, dude. Well, I saw a video where some fucking, not uh, Benjamin Kicks, although Who, he was there. <laughs> and, but like, he, and he flicked up with Trump. There's like a middle-aged hype sneaker guy who did a video in the airport, like flying back from sneaker con, where he's like, yo, I was blessed to be one of the few... <laughs> content creators that was given one of these pairs and president Trump signed it. And he like, whatever does this fucking thing. And he goes, love him or hate him. You can't deny it. these are rare. And it's like, wow, it literally is just like a, holy shit. Hey man, good job. Like you got the rare sneakers. Uh, congrats on your newest financial instrument. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's uh sneakers now for Nazis. <laughs> what did, what do these motherfuckers normally wear? What does a Trump, oh, pro- Trump voters probably wear. Oh, it's Hey dudes. Oh, Trump voters. Yeah, I think yeah, like, yeah. like sneaker. No, sneakerheads, head obviously, voters. whatever the fuck. But I'm saying like a Trump voter, I guess maybe this is like, like combat boots. Is this an upgrade? For, are, the, are these the, the Trump, the Trump ones and uh, the Trump 45s rather than an upgrade from Hey Dudes? Low key. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At least they make a fucking statement, dude. You know what I'm really excited for? And uh, this happens with a, a, a ton of obviously anything related to Trump and then made to order stuff in general. Never obviously with the only pockets that matters. What ultimately ends up shipping 
in su- in summer, right? Yeah. The the those like the people reacting to getting their Trump shoes, like they're going to be so much worse than whatever floor models were on display um, at sneaker con. I can only imagine. And what is refund policy? There are no refunds. Well, All sales on GetTrumpSneakers.com are final. You, well, there you go. The proof is in the pudding. Uh, uh, the images shown are for. Ill- <laughs> FAQ. Will yeah. I be getting the exact sneaker or fragrance that there I see on the sex? They're also whoa, selling whoa, 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 a cologne whoa, 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 wait, wait, perfume. Wait, 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 wait. The images shown are for illustration purposes only and may not be an exact representation of ah, the product. Ah, you don't say. Wait, hold on. There's a fragrance? Like, he, he flash drops sneakers and a matching fragrance? Yeah. What we got? What does the fragrance smell like? Oh, let me find this. Um, but uh, it says, like, it's pruder but sold out. Like, what is going on there? Uh, the runners. Okay. Oh wait, can we look at the runners right. real quick? That, yeah. So the runners are two hundred, and are like honestly kind of fire. These these literally look like the thin blue line things. Like they're just like yeah. you know at this point now everyone you know stole Nike's fly knit. It technology looks like a fly knit. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. The and the the Trump victory forty seven cologne. First of all, it looks exactly like a truff hot sauce bottle. That um, is. Absurd. With like the those are tall, renders, tall, thin, cylinder, hexagonal cylinder, uh, except the instead of like a, a cap. bottle cap, it's just Trump's <laughs> head, um, which you could very easily put up your butt. Um, <laughs> I mean, yo, I'll say this. There is someone who will fuck themselves with yes. this. Guaranteed. Victory is the signature scent of strength and success encased in a luxurious gold bottle. Oh, oh my God. It's so gold colored. This cologne, gold. a part of President Trump's exclusive line, is for the decisive and the bold. Wow. Okay. We're getting to the actual scent. A crisp opening of citrus blends into a cedar heart, underpinned by a, a rich base of leather and amber, <laughs> crafting a commanding presence. Victory is more than a fragrance. This cologne is for the movers, the shakers. And the history makers crowned with wow. a Trump collector's cap, splash on a bit of victory and own every room you step into. I will say that's fucking good copywriting. Victory I- is very much a collector's piece. Trump fragrances are estimated to ship in June 2024. Free shipping on orders over 120. This is interesting because, again, like thinking about the the, the average Trumper, I don't see them as someone that like wears cool statement sneakers or even uses cologne because nah, because I think you're thinking of like white trash hicks but you got to think of like the grifters the snake oil salesmen all the guys that go to mar a lago like all the giuliani ass motherfuckers that are like in a bad speaking of suit in a bad suit okay have some sort of like uh shill or grift that they're trying to like mm-hmm. you know and it's like oh you gotta look good feel good smell good play good right I mean, that's, that's probably what they say all the time they, um, they, to quote the great Deion Sanders himself. Wait, there's a, and there's a women's version as well. There's a perfume. Damn, dude. The couple that fucking sprays victory together stays together. Holy shit, dude. Um, That's a classy bottle. This doesn't have <laughs> Trump's head on it. And no. it's not a direct rip of the, what is it? <laughs> sauce? Truff hot sauce? It's truff. Truff hot sauce. Yeah. They're at sauce on Instagram, I believe. Shout out John Buscemi. This is just a hourglass figurine <laughs> in what they appear to be wearing some Issey Miyake. Wait, wait a second. Shout out Buscemi, but like, wait, sneakers. Oh, trough shaped bottles. What's going on here? We're going to get to the bottom of this. I'm going to text John. Uh, the Trump bitch that this is wearing an Issey Miyake elegant dress. Uh, the Trump woman. Trump woman. Introducing victory by Trump for bitches, for women. <laughs> a fragrance that captures the essence of feminine strength and elegance Ooh. infused with a blend of light floral notes, hints of citrus zest. Mm. And a zesty whisper of spice. Hmm. The scent is for the woman who embraces her victories with grace and allure. Okay. Okay. All right. Interesting. Keep going. Accents of warm spice evoke a subtle strength, making it a perfect match for any woman ready to make her mark with poise and confidence. Okay. With victory by Trump dash for women. <laughs> <laughs> I think should the title be, uh, pod, <laughs> throwing fits dash for women. <laughs> you wear more than a fragrance. You wear a statement. Trump fragrances are estimated to ship in June 2024. Free shipping on orders over $120. It's interesting to see the gender divide here, right? So um, so the men's shit is about well, being um, powerful and winning, and the woman's scent- And owning the room. Right, and the women's scent is about poise and grace. And elegance. And, These are all adjectives I associate right. with uh, Donald Trump and the, so funny, and the Trump like, family. The, the bad <laughs> clip art. Um, was the re- you know the rendering as best as the rendering can. like the Trump is like crooked on it the is, box like it, it is, is 
bad. Well, I mean, because it's a pre-order, I wonder if this, I mean, this must have been just whipped up like, yeah. you know, lickety split ski yeah, exactly. when my man was, you know, um, you know, touching down in uh, Philadelphia. Do you think you could pull off the Trump 45s? No one can. They're so bad. Hulk bro. Hogan could. I mean, listen, a lot of people can wear them and will, maybe. They're not, no one's going to look good. A thousand people will wear them. I don't know. I feel like this is, um, this is honestly, maybe, I hope you got two, one to rock, one to stock. I see this, <laughs> I see this going on the shelf like a commemorative coin sold on Fox News. They're not, uh, they weren't, they haven't been on StockX. Um, Do you think StockX, kind of surprised. Do you think StockX is going to like take a moral stance and like, you know, not let people list them or? I just think that, but when you search Trump, you get some fire colorways of like other stuff. Wait, what other Trump stuff's on stock? It's not Trump stuff. It's, it's uh, uh, they think that I'm searching for triumph. Oh, uh, okay. So like this, I, don't, I wouldn't buy Sockneys and wear these Sockneys, but like that's pretty a pretty good fucking shoe. That is a really good shoe. Yeah. A nice little technical runner. Dude, you could buy them for, I could buy them for 90 bucks. Um, Mizuno and Saucony super slept on. This dark green. NB nine, what is nine ninety? Wait, it says no, Trump, wait. R? No, it's oh, Triumph. Triumph, 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 yeah. Triumph Green. So thinks I'm searching for Triumph. Trump um, Green, that's the color of money. Like again, this another Saucony runner. I don't know if you guys can fucking zoom in on 4K, but yeah, nice fucking ring. Saucony, dude. Next up, bro. Yeah, you can fucking book it. I don't know. I'm just because they're look. You, show, you showed just, me two here. cool sneakers yeah. that, that are available on StockX.com. Yo. Um, all right, enough of fucking Trump. Let's talk about. Wearing shitty, literally shitty clothing. So we're back from Vegas. The one kind of like wrinkle in our travels was we hit a, there was that snowstorm in New York. Mm -hmm. And so we actually had to stay an extra night in Vegas and just fly out the next day. Um, I ran out of underwear and I normally pack like an insane person, like mm -hmm. with the thought that I'm going to shit my pants twice a day. Yeah. And so I bring like three pairs of underwear per day. <clears throat> and because we were doing multiple fit changes, because we were like running around and like uh, not getting sweaty, but like getting no. a little fucking damp in the undercarriage and I, I was and, and stinky dude just because it's you're in a smoke filled room exactly you know, like today when you have when you're there for like three days when you're traveling for three days and you have nine pairs of underwear you're like ha! oh another pair of underwear I'm please rich in drawers yeah another of your your 13th pair of drawers master wayne your finest pair of hill city master wayne yes um so i ran out though which never happens uh poor planning what failed to plan plan to fail Boom, Larry Original just came up with that off the dome. Yeah, yeah. Um, I had a similar but different problem. I didn't bring enough socks. Ooh. So, What's grosser? Underwear, I okay, think. Okay, I don't really, your boy doesn't really sweat. We talked about that, but yo, wearing socks, especially in some yeah. of these like cowboy boots and shit that, I, that I've been, um, you know, bringing with me, you know, because when in Rome, it's like, that's a, that's a, you know, wearing boots all day and then you got to reuse socks. Like I'm. That's gross. I was ashamed. I you was go back into the pile. You wore like you wore your Monday socks on the Tuesday flight. I'm trying to remember which one. I think the flight pair stayed relegated to flights. So like, yeah, I ran those back. I brought underwear. Though, though I guess I wasn't like fucking loose with it. Like I brought one extra pair and I can't, just just because you never know. Breaking case of emergency. And ultimately I was correct there. But yeah, dude, I was running back socks. And to Damn. me, like, yeah, I'm gross. I think of the two of us, not that we're not hygienic, but I think I'm like, a. I mean, you literally told the entire audience that I ate chicken fingers off the floor of a stadium like a rat yeah. when it. They were in a receptacle. Raccoon and, Larry. Yeah. But um, now nah, running back socks, I was even like, oh, damn, dude, I wish I was better than this right now. Yeah. I did a, I guess the classic move with when you got to wear old undies is you turn them inside out. But then I'm like, got to thinking, I was like, is that, because then like you're like shitty ass juice is like touching your pants versus just like your skin that you're going to then shower the net, you know, as soon as you land. Yeah. So also, yeah. Is it turn the draws inside out? Mm hmm. Wear them as you were mm -hmm. or free ball it on a flight, all right, <clears throat> on a flight. Free balling is something that I have personally never found a ton of joy in outside of baggies with a liner. Sure. And then and obviously, and then ultimately, I'm going to be probably near body of water. So that, but for me, and this is splitting hairs a bit, but if you flip them inside out, forget about even just like the ass and gooch and ball and dick juice. Like now, like touching the inside of your pants. your pants, you're just taking all that grossness and making it just like closer to the world around you. And I know that, like, again, splitting hairs that's here. So nice of you. But no, no, that's like, I just, like, God forbid, like, not that anyone would ever know, but I don't think I would be able to 
live my life as full of delusional confidence that I normally do if I feel like my farty ass underwear side of the draws are closer to the world around me. Yeah. Well, I think the worst thing you do is turn them around because that's, you don't want to put Well, the ergonomically on. is not, well, ergonomically it won't even work. Well, for boxes oh, of wood. But see, you don't want to put, you don't want to put butt on cock. You box. don't want to put your butt on your cock. You know, it's funny. This whole time I've been centering myself and I apologize to you in the audience at home. I've been thinking about boxer briefs because that's what I wear. And you can't really fuck around with that too much. Even if you like flip them inside out, it's not going to be comfortable. And yeah. I'd almost rather be gross and stinky in my mind than like just uncomfortable all day. Also in my head, because boxer briefs are so like up in your shit and like keeping like strapping you down. No, I no, think no, that no. they Again, th that's support, brother. But I think that they get grosser than just boxers, which are just fucking loosely hanging in the area. I think you. F I think if it's boxers, you flip them inside out, right? And then well, boxers, then, you can, yeah. Now, then, but yeah. then your button flies on the inside, so you have to like get in your shit. Button and, fly? What the fuck? You don't have uh, your boxers are not button fly. I mean, they're they that's like not the, that. They just have the opening. But that's not that. Like some, but I would say half boxers. In the market, come sure, with the like fly. fan. If you're a fucking fancy boy, I'm not even saying that. I just think that that's I mean, that's that's fancy to you. Yeah, <laughs> you sound like a fucking uh, Trump voter, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what your underwear's got buns on it? What are you, some kind of city slicker? No, for real. Uh, the less shit on your underwear, the better. Keep it simple. You don't want all that all that bells and whistles I mean, hanging around your belly. The guy who wears underwear that objectively is more fabric than like other more types. fabric, but not like. Not synthetic materials, not like uh, oil derived materials, not fucking uh, less breathable shit, not like all the bells and whistles that you fancy boys have. Yeah, whatever. But I, would, I would I would be curious to hear what the audience at yeah, home yeah, does yeah. in that situation. But th again, this is why you just you, you can travel light in certain ways. But I think that when it comes to underwear, I'm always going to have a a spare. Socks, oh, I I've have, learned my lesson now. No, this was insane that I, I was like, I could not believe that I, and I must have like miscalculated and put some clean underwears in the dirty pile. Because oh. I was like, I brought like four extra pairs. I always do. Where are they? Yeah. What happened to them? <laughs> Let me sniff these undies. I mean, that's how you would tell, right? Yeah, but they all just smelled like fucking cigs at that point. <laughs> or, or it's also like, I don't know about you, but like, this always bothers me, like, and this is coming from a man with a Remova suitcase. Once any uh, any suitcase, Amazon, fucking Remova, whatever. Once clothes go in the suitcase, it just all they all smell like suitcase, which is like its own smell. Does that ever you ever notice that? Yeah, I don't mind suitcase smell. Ah, I'm not a fan, dude. Mm, Do you treat it? But you don't even wear cologne. Like I travel with cologne, so I'm like, okay. Ultimately, like this shirt that now, whether even if the shirt is clean, to me, it's like once it goes in the suitcase, it's kind of like suitcase sullied. I don't mind. I, I kind of like the suitcase smell. It reminds me of like uh, when I used to go to Japan as a kid, because like you'd have like two weeks worth of clothing in a suitcase Nostalgia. and it all smelled like suitcase smell. But yeah. it was like, yo, like I'm fucking in Japan now. Yeah. Okay. All right. So for you, it's a nostalgia thing. Yeah. A little Much bit. like victory, Trump for women. Um, so we fucked up with the underwear, but where we didn't fuck up was with the garment bag. So a little life hack for the fellows listening at home bring a fucking garment bag with you anytime you travel. It is a free carry on item. Mostly. Well, yeah. I, do you have to be like flying like at a upper cabin to get uh, the garment bag treatment? I don't know. I'm not sure. Well, there's limited real estate in the garment bag kind of area, right? Because a lot of the uh, flight attendants and pilots are going to put shit in there, right? right? So I've run into that problem before. Where but it's if you're like running your own suit month and you got to fly with at least one, two, maybe three suits like I brought. I br you brought three suits? Well, two suits and a snakeskin blazer. Okay, right, 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 right <laughs> of course. Um, Joe Exotic over here. No, nah, I, uh, I have never taken a garment bag on a flight unless I was bringing suits. With that said, the past few times I've been traveling with my wife, we like to have, like, you know, little fancy dinner fits. So she's got some stuff in there. I got my suits. I've never been denied, but I've only ever been comfort plus or above. So I cannot, oh. so I can know. Oh, with, the, with your no. buttons on your underwear? Just because, like, I would hate to tell the audience, like, oh, yeah, it's fine for right. every class. And then you're giving someone then bad yeah. advice. It's going to yeah, fuck yeah, yeah, them. Yeah. Make sure you're good. But uh, even though we were flying back first class, um, this fucking bitch at the gate was like, yo, two items only. I've that come, includes garment bags. I've come up with a very derogatory name for her. What is it? She was the consolidation cunt. Wow. The cunt of consolidation. Yeah. All right. <laughs> um, don't clip that. Uh, <laughs> she was adamant, bro. She was like, you can't, like, garment bags count. Like, you have your, I had a, I had a backpack, a rolly, and a garment bag. You had a rolly bag, a garment bag, and a tote, tote bag. Mm -hmm. And they were like, 
We're like, no, garn bags are good. And she's like, no, two only. That counts towards one of them. I even was like, no, no, like I'm first, I'm first class. She's right. Like, and she's like, she's it like, doesn't matter. Consolidate. Yeah. And I said, you cunt. No. Um, so I was like, oh, I'll just gate check my Rolly. Well, you actually, okay. I was, just- I was completely fucked because you could have maybe stuffed your garment bag into your tote. And I did. And knowing that this second I fucking got past the fucking, you know, check-in process, I'm going to literally just hang that shit, right. ask to hang it up. But yeah, for me, and I know that you always travel with your trusty Patagonia backpack, but for me, the console, it was more of a nuisance. It wasn't like, what am I going to do now? Because I just threw it in there. I'm like, all right, done. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for wasting one minute of my life, even yeah. though I'm a fucking the most important person on this plane. I was kind of fucked. So I shrunk back into the crowd. Nice. I draped my garden bag over my rolly bag handle and then I put my Studi Nicholson bomber jacket over the garden bag. Just be like, oh, this was my jacket. Subterfuge. This is my jacket I'm bringing on. Mm, I'm not going to fucking hijack the plane with fucking... <laughs> Yeah. Well, don't are my jackets are my suits the bomb yeah they yeah, are i was gonna say bomber jacket oh i see sneaking things onto the plane right we right right have a, a problem um, here with some of our language i got caught because not only was the <laughs> immediately not only was the consolidator being the the stickler i was calling it the stickler um she had a backup the woman actually scanning the boarding pass it was like that's that's three. Sorry. That's right. I thought it was just that one woman who like was trying to dude okay real quick also before we forget they're counting she said fanny packs and cross body bags also now count as a fucking item. That was what are you crazy. About? You could, if it's on your person. That was crazy. Uh, That's wild. I was thinking about, so I saw a dude, he, I saw, he, I saw his ticket and he was sitting next to me and I want, and he only had a backpack. I don't want to be like, yo dude, could you like take my garden bag on? And like, just, and these are two things, which is the one thing that they tell you that you're not supposed to do. As a flyer, <laughs> is take any piece of luggage from anybody. You do not know. It's fucking bullshit. We got to know each Yo, other. Yo, bro, take bit. this bomb. Mer jacket. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, dude. Wait, so so and so what did you do? Because you actually kind of fucking I finessed. I finessed. Yeah. So I was like, I was like, oh no, I'll just gate check the rolly. She's like, all right, cool. She like tagged it. Tagged and then I get it. down, and then I get down to the flight. I rip the tag <laughs> off. <laughs> and I'm like, garment bag, hang up, please. Yeah. Thank you. Um Bye. That, the, the issue that I have with that flight back, even though ultimately the delayed flight, I know it delayed. The pod by a day, which like obviously some people they no no it wasn't the, it the the delay became happened because it required fourteen hours to upload a right. fifty gig video file because it was a two hour pod right. My point being that like what pissed me off the most yeah even though this delay what I was gonna say was it was great even though I lost more money that night playing roulette I can't it was great to like get a real, like a good night's sleep, right? sleep in versus the red eye that we were on originally that we actively pushed in fear that we were going to, God forbid, re- re- reroute it on our way back to civilized society. Yes. Like, I'm not trying to be in D.C. Wait, so what, sorry, so what's the thing that pissed you off the most? The first class crew, you know, all of the, I thought this is polite high society, right? This crew back, we complained on the way down about the racist, drunk, you know, Vegas people that are like, mm. woo, Vegas. The rudeness of this first class cabin. Oh, our fellow passengers. Yeah. I couldn't even believe it. And as someone who doesn't fly first class a lot, but would like to be a part of that world much more, I just expect so much more yeah. from my fellow cast members. It started with your at neighbor. The, at the top of the. It started with your neighbor who put both her fucking bags up top which fucked me up because she put her bags in my overhead space. And so I had to move back. <sighs> and you know why she did that? Why? It's because uh, even though I was in before her, my seatmate, uh, the people sitting, if, if I'm, we're in row, I was in row two. I think you're in three because yeah. they're like, you know, staggered for whatever reason, the couple in row four decided to just use row two's overhead. What's that about? So that woman know. had no choice. That was the domino. No, she should have put, she should have put her second bag underneath her seat. All, all I'm saying is that to my fellow first class flyers, don't be the motherfucker that tips the first rude domino that has then repercussions for all of us when we're supposed to be better. I know it's true. And it really, really bothered me. No politeness, no thought or care for others. And again, it's like we're, 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 tr- we're trying to hold ourselves to a higher standard because honestly, when you're in first class, you need to be a positive role model for the rest of the plane to let people know aspirationally that things can get better and you could one day find yourself in the upper echelon where flying is no longer 
a fucking chore, but an enjoyable, relaxing, wonderful experience. Yeah, we can watch two movies and have yourself a Larry Day. Um, we eventually made it back to civilization. We got back. We're good. I'm finally recovered. We got the garment back. Are you? God. Well, okay. here's, I, you know, I'm just keeping it real with the audience. You're aware of this, but for whatever reason, when I get got back, I still had this like these demons that needed to be exercised and like kind of hit like a, a mini bender. And I was like, holy fucking shit. But thankfully all that is out of my system. And I finally feel good and back to myself. It's How many days later? It's because you're wearing a suit. Uh, yeah. Six days later. Six days later. So that's um, the recovery time, apparently. Yeah. Uh, so we're back home and we're getting back to our routines and I get hit with a fucking meteor. At a left field, not meteor. Let me rephrase that. Uh, asteroid. <laughs> um, where I'm playing, I'm doing my, I'm playing tennis. I'm doing my fucking tennis thing, and uh, I get a text from our boy Kev, who works at Victor Victor. Yeah, and he puts me on group chat with Stephen Victor. Did Victor you Victor. have Steve? You had Stephen's number. I have his number. Okay, but he you definitely. Never, but you never text him. We've texted like years ago, but okay. like he doesn't, he doesn't have, have my shit saved. saved. No, 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 no chance, no chance. No, 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 so they want they wanted to know um, something that I'd actually mentioned on a previous podcast. Okay, and they're like, "Yo, what's the intel on that?" I'm like, and I didn't answer because I was playing tennis. I said, "Sorry, I was playing tennis, training for the Victor Victor Invitational." The right. only intel is da 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 da. Kev goes, "Wow, Stephen gonna make you play him now." Stephen, you play tennis? <laughs> oh no, me? Yeah, Stephen, are you good? <laughs> me, like three point five four on my best days. Okay, out of, Stephen, out of ten. <laughs> What's the scale? So for those who don't know, like I, I believe that six is like pro level. Like four is like your wait, so what is the scale? One like to six? Yeah. Is this a tennis term? It's a ten it's a tennis. Oh, okay, thing. Okay, it's, okay. it's not out of, it's not out of ten. Okay. Three point five out of ten. What the fuck? Nope. <laughs> God damn. Put some respect on my fucking racket. He goes, Steven, do you think you can beat me? I say I assume you got a tennis court in your backyard, LOL, so probably not, but you should put together a summer tourney. Steven. Do you think you can beat me? <laughs> <laughs> Answer the fucking question. Uh, he goes, I never played until two years ago. I say, then yeah, I could probably beat you. <laughs> he goes, hmm, you think so? Want to play tonight? <laughs> oh my God. Before my flight to Japan? <laughs> you, I'm assuming you did not. I said, I got to go to this dinner and event tonight. He goes, when you back, where do you play? I'd like to challenge you to a duel. So I'm ready. Did you know you were opening up Pandora's box by just mentioning casually that you were no. playing tennis? And then I'm hitting Kev on the side. I'm like, yo, Kev, like, is he fucking nasty? And, but I was like thinking, I was like, what can I Yeah, can I get out of this? You could parlay this into some bet where like, you're, I'm going to smoke this clown. Well, okay. I'm going to call him a clown. Sorry, sorry, but, sorry, 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 sorry. I was like, <laughs> oh, 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 Kev, I, Kev, I know you're listening. We want it back. <laughs> I, I was know, like, should I, know, I, I know you could smoke this fool. <laughs> should I bet this man a Ferrari? But it's more like, what could I bring to the table, right? That could match, like, entice him. Because the most competitive man in music, music, I think that's why he's successful, is because he's uber competitive. Yes. Um, could I sign him? Could I bet him to a publishing deal where he signs me? How is that good for him? <laughs> And then it's like, what do I bring to the table? Like, what could uh, I would like, say? Uh, any any artist you sign will have on the pod. Like, what? I mean, a gamble that we uh, a bet that we've made and a bet that we've lost. We took a gamble. Why don't you just offer up the IP? Mm, no, bro, because you, you own half the IP. Yeah, but what if I told you then uh, I get to use the Ferrari half the time? But you can't drive. <laughs> but my wife can. Okay. And first of all, I can drive. You can also. What's that to be drive? So I was talking. So when we went to Texas. Um, Jenna, her, she had, I told the story where she like basically sprained her ankle very badly. And as she was recuperating, she said, God forbid, she goes, it hurts me to drive. Cause that's like a, from the airport to her parents' house, you know, you're talking like two plus hours in the whip. Damn. And um, her parents, because of when we were landing, we're like, you know what? You guys don't have to pick us up that, you know, that, that's it's too late. Don't worry about it. We'll rent a car and we'll see you when we see you. Um, and I was like, fuck. I could do it for sure. Driving in Texas highway is pretty easy. But then I'm like, wait a second. I started thinking, I'm like, highway's scary. Yeah. And I was like, that's maybe where I, I wouldn't want to jump. It's like uh, out of the frying pan into the fire. When dude. was the last time you drove? So uh, we deduced that um, it has been over 10 years. You can't drive. No, no. But I can't. when you say can, like legally, I can. Okay, legally you can, but I you're not able to drive. No, I mean, no, I'm physically no, I am physically able to drive. You don't know that. 
What do you mean? What's another thing you haven't done in 10 years? And could you still do that to the Damn, ability? That's a where, great question. Yeah. What haven't I done? Yo. Okay. Okay. Uh, I haven't done homework in 10 years. Yeah. Could you go home? It's 3.30. Could you go home, school's out, and go and do homework? No. Yeah. Yeah. But what's what's some math? Like, I assume you like took like math in high school and shit. Could, could you do that? <laughs> you assume? Could no. you do the Pythagorean theorem right now? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. No, but like, could you like solve for X? Y equals oh, MX plus algebra? B? algebra? Yeah. Or is that geometry? See, I don't know. I might have already just exposed myself. What about you, motherfucker? I mean, you are half Japanese. I'm not saying I can do something that I did 10 years ago, <laughs> but I have driven... <laughs> At least 10,000 times in the last 10 years. Anyway, uh, I was very, very shooketh. While, while still putting on a brave face as the man of the family, sure. if, I had to, if I had to step up because of my wife's injury, um, I, th I think... Step on the gas. <laughs> dude, but highways. But, and, and she was telling me an anecdote where... Highways um, are easier than the city. Well, no, no. I think it's more about the speed and the intensity of that driving experience versus like, oh, just back roads in Texas, some will be easier. Yeah. Versus highway at night, speed limit. I don't even know if dude, speed limits even exist down there. Right? No. Like, you know? I was thinking more like uh, you haven't been in the car, like it's much like dating where you haven't dated in like 15 oh, years. Oh, dude. It's like driving. Well, first of all, you can't date, right? If you tried to date tomorrow, like, no. Dude, honestly, Jenna laughs about that with me all the time where like that actually is better a better comp than homework, homework. like getting back into the dating game yeah what, what do you think what do you think would be easier for me going on a, going on a date or driving two hours on the highway driving, driving <laughs> the highway but also it's like well first of all one like all the computers and phones do it for you now essentially but it's also like getting into a, a Wait, car now essentially driving oh and dating Get, uh, <laughs> getting getting a car now getting into car now is kind of just like driving an iphone if you're in like a brand new car I'm definitely the kind of guy that would be like, all right, JB, I'm stepping up and then get and be like, how do I turn it on? Like, y yes, like truly. You weren't able to call an Uber <laughs> in Vegas. No, no, but no, you'd no, be no. on your, Bro, you'd be fucking on your phone. That's what would happen. You'd be on your phone while driving and crash and die. That is, first of all, on you this, can't even stay off your phone during a movie. On this podcast, I have never once given bad advice when it comes to things that you can do while driving. Okay, I've never done that <laughs> ever. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. And uh, if I was behind the wheel, you can bet your ass that phone will be on do not disturb and would be in the back seat. Damn, what if the group chat's going crazy though? I'll know in two hours. I'll <laughs> chime in in two. I'll, I'll I'll throw my reacts out in two and a half hours. Speaking of being a man of the house, what's going on? With, you're doing a bunch of home renos. What's happening there? Uh. <laughs> You're doing that. No, 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 okay. no, no. But also, that was just a hilarious uh, transition. God, I haven't done that one in a while. Um, Jenna has this new habit where um, if she wants something done, she'll do it <laughs> in the apartment. A renovation or even like, let's renovation. say, renovation, renovation, or just oh, bring that back so hard post Jamaica. Oh, yeah. You and you should. I mean, that's why yeah. that's why you go. I can. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. know if you can. No, for sure. It's respect. Because <laughs> I will have spent four days among. Four, you go for four days. Oh, that's right. He's got to be back on a Monday. Four nights. Um, exactly. Yeah. Get back Sunday night. That's going to be a more relaxing four nights in Vegas. Yes. Anyway, so now yes. anytime I leave uh, town for a business trip, I come back and there is a complete change in the apartment because I am very resistant to change. And even if she is the caretaker, much like you, um, you know, I'm trying to help out well as little as possible, but like I'm going to be involved. I came back one time, whole bedroom had been repainted. This time I come back. What color? Like a shocking color? It was like plaid? It's Triumph Green. No way, really? I swear to God. It's like that dark That's green. very calming. It's I like, know. I it's really, like I, forest I know. moss. I really, really like it. And by the way, every time that I've come back to a change, it's been spectacular. So not so much for Valentine's Day, but because the timing worked out, I came back. She had completely renovated our second bedroom, a.k.a. my office, a.k.a. our dressing room. You've seen this system, this new rack system on Zoom. You have not once mentioned it at all. I don't think I noticed it. Really? Yeah. You know how there used to be like shoe racks behind me and yeah. a dresser? Now there is a whole, you know, kind of not custom. I mean, this isn't like some crazy, you know, $20,000 like in mid-century modern installation. She went to fucking the container store and crate and barrel went fucking crazy. And we just now what was a wall that was probably being used extremely inefficiently has now this whole rack system that is great for hanging up coats and shirts. And actually, it's just my coats because I have so many fucking coats. <laughs> Too many um, leathers. But I have a sneaking suspicion 
that while this is something that needed to happen because this room was out of control and, and it right. was untenable, right? Um, to the point where going in there, even for me, who's a hoarder um, and is can sometimes be a messy little boy, uh, it was just depressing to be in there. If I had to like mm. be in there for a Zoom call or anything. Um, That's where, why we got the bacon. But I will say, I feel like this was, there's part of me, a small percentage, that, that, that this whole thing was done for a very specific reason. You what? mentioned that I might have framed two movie posters. Um, oh, yeah. And I, had, and I had ideas of where I wanted them to go in the communal space of the apartment. Okay. And Was uh, this, what were the movies? Do we, can you re- just yeah, mention them quickly? It's uh, Sorcerer and the Devils. And by the so way. So like Harry Potter movies? Like, and how much did you pay for these posters? No, I'm not going to say how that. How much did you pay for these Harry Potters? No, actually, I, I, uh, the posters were both... They're vintage originals. They are. They were folded. <laughs> Fifty Potskis. <laughs> they were each around like two hundred bucks. Fifty Sorskis. But I do not want to publicly say how much it's costing to get. Oh, them framing, framed. framing is absurd. Right, right. Framing is ridiculous. I just got a piece of art framed, and it's like cost way more than this fucking triptych woodblock print from some Japanese artist from eighteen fifty six. Right, right. And I don't want to complain. And also, it's worth it. It's yeah, no, fucking worth it. Uh, mainly also because a uh, frame bridge uh, has lost. Uh, art of mine before, right? So I don't, and that only happened one time, and I'm not here to fuck fucking, Framebridge. I don't know if there's any like auto ads where we like co-sign Framebridge, but fuck yeah. Framebridge. I'm not out here to ether brands. I already got my fucking composites. I'm trying to stay positive. But uh, the first thing she said to me, well, anyway, by the way, she hated that I got the posters to begin with, right? And then she hated my plan of just some options of where I think they could go in the right next to the Boondock Saints. No, no, but in the in the, <laughs> that in the was a fire fire. And then where I rewatched that recently fucking slaps. Yeah, I, I, I want to. So re- good. Where's it streaming? Uh, I don't know. Peacock or some shit. OK, I got Sometimes, like my whenever my like a uh, dashboard. <laughs> <laughs> I think I just I could just search like Boondock Saints. Don't just like say like where it's streaming. Yeah, but not was, everything. But the, oh, so did you rent it or was it free? I guess oh, come on. I, did I rent Boondock? Saints? I think you could probably rent Boondock Saints for like two dollars. Anyway. I had some plans of where I wanted my cool new posters, my framed movie post, vintage movie posters to go. But Peacock. This- it's on Peacock. Okay. And Amazon Prime. And- All free? Yep. And Tubi. I'll, I'll be tapping in. Uh, I can't is- believe you didn't review that on Letterboxd. It is free on Plex. Because I'm not into quipifying culture, bro. Um, so the second I walk into the, to the, new, the new office, yeah. and I'm blown away, and I'm just taking it all in. It's so organized. It's incredible. Did first, she wear your Carhartt's while? First thing she says is she goes, look there, look there. I measured enough room for your new posters. And I'm like, fuck. She's trying to get these out of the living room at any cost necessary. Oh, that's mad funny. I mean, yeah, they should not be in the living room. They're, they're, they're going to still be. In the, I'm going to still try to put them in the living room. They're fucking. No, but they're not. See, here's the thing that like. I, I wanna, You're a poster, Ari. The, the next time that I, I do get on Instagram for a little dump ski, the framed final fire ass Vintage movie posters of two <laughs> classics will be in the dump that people can see for themselves, beautifully framed for way too much money from a local black owned small business okay. in bed Right next to your beer pong poster or the fucking chick in the bikini bending over saying, this is why I keep beer on the bottom shelf. Now, I understand that like if I ha- if I was like a guy who lived in suburbia and I spent my money on like a home theater, right, that's where they would go. I'm a professional podcaster that lives in Brooklyn. Um, so that situation doesn't exist. So for me, um, this is shit that I, I think would look cool and the audience can see for themselves. I was just hoping that they could make their way into a communal space versus truly being um, excommunicated. Relegated to second And tier. relegated to a room yeah. where the door is always closed. Right. Yeah. Do well, I want people to come over and be like looking at them and I can then it's like, oh my God, this guy must be a sick fall on letterboxed. Yeah, but here's what pissing <laughs> me off. When you compare them to dorm room posters and or movies of the quality that is Boondock Saints, it's infuriating. Because these are masterpieces. Yo, did you know that Tyler Durden was actually a figment of Edward Norton's imagination? Spoiler alert. <laughs> Anyway, uh, that's my renovation. That's great. Also, by the way, dude, I hope you're. And, and by the way, when your renovation happens, renovation. Well, it'll happen when I can fucking when we get an office. Which quick update: um, we lowballed the shit out of our first office that we saw, and it did. It was not received in a friendly manner. I understand real estate in New York is a fucking game, and you never know. If the rules are actually the rules that you think right. are the rules of the game. Uh, with that said, 
we straight up pulled the grailed maneuver, and I, I think we fucked, fucked, fucked ourselves. We're seeing a bunch tomorrow. Um, yeah. I'm excited, though, to get the office because that my second bedroom, where I, I turn into a little work area, I can't really do anything because it's it's home to this podcast table, which is now moved in and out twice a week. So, like, once shit is set, once we get into a space, we have a professional workspace, like... Mm-hmm. I hope to, I don't know what I'm going to do with that, but I'll figure it out. Uh, I actually was referring to something else, which is uh, your shoe rack, col- your shoe rack collapsing a second time now. Yeah. Speaking um, of asteroids hitting your fucking life. Dude. Yeah. A second shoe rack has been hit. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Shit sucks. Excuse, excuse, excuse me, sir. Uh, the shoe rack has, uh, has fallen down again. Huh? Goats. Um, yeah. Shit sucks. But you know what? We're out here building. I mean, I, I did witness you try to procure lumber from Jersey City when I walked in. Well, I, was, I thought I was I thought I was getting lumber from the lumber yard either that was either in that one on Spring Street. Oh yeah, that was classic. Or the, or the one on um, 15th and 9th near like Milk Studios, which I assume is still there. But, but you were talking to motherfuckers in Jersey. We get the email back and like, yeah, pickups in Jersey City. I'm like, what the fuck? I mean, whatever. I so are you wait? Are you gonna build your? Are you gonna build something yourself? Just simple closet shelving and some L brackets. It's very easy. I'm kind of handy. I don't think you know that about me. Right, you're not the kind of guy whose Carhartt pants would fall down when a hammer was added to the equation. No, but I wouldn't be wearing Carhartt pants to begin with. Yeah, I guess, okay, that's totally fair. I guess, yeah, you and Jenna are, yeah, I'm not, I'm not handy. No. I, I feel like that's you're like- You're handsy. <laughs> it's just funny because my dad's very handy, but I think Jews generally are not handy people. Jesus was a, carp- was a carpenter. Damn, great call out. Yeah. I forgot about that one. I forgot <laughs> about that, the number one Jew. The number one, the number one <laughs> boy. Um, Truly. Here's what I'm good at. Not just building, but linking and building. And this is the last thing before yeah. we get out of here because we, oh shit, we, uh, we should probably wrap this up soon. Oh, so this happened. Uh, we were at a dinner and um, you were outside smoking, I believe. No, you could smoke inside at that dinner. It was awesome. It was before you started smoking inside. Oh. Yeah. I'm but it was sure. cool. It was a little like prelude to Vegas or a little homage to Vegas. Honestly, you just smoke you're, inside. you're so right. Well, that was right. It was, a, I was, um, it was a little test drive. Exactly. Before we left. Um, I was hanging out with Jacob Gallagher, mm-hmm. who some might know as the guest for the worst episode of all time here on Throwing Fits. Depends who you ask, i.e. <laughs> you or Jacob. <laughs> and our boy Dirty, who we hadn't seen in so long. His name is Steven, but right. he- Used to go by dirty used to when he was like operative in his mid twenties and worked at BPMW with us and did sales for like uh, North Projects, Mark McNary, mm-hmm. uh, Penfield, Shades of Grey, Mike Cohen, all these fucking tree torn, tree torn. <laughs> uh, these- what was it? Oh, yeah. Anyway, right. Whatever. Now he's the fucking the the big swinging dick over a Carhartt Whip, yes. which stands for working penis. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> And we're like, bro, do they still call you dirty? Yeah. He's like, no, they call me Steven. Well, actually, I introduced him to, I think it was Gallagher. I'm like, or whoever, I think it might have been Gallagher. It was, yeah. And I was like, damn, dude, I'm, I was just like, I'm sorry that I introduced you as dirty. Like, I <laughs> fucked that. My bad, dude. That's not but, his uh, name. I honestly think that he is, I always thought that, I used to see him all the time because we used to live near each other. Um, and I'd see him on the train all the time. And I used to think that he was like, one of the best dressed motherfuckers in New York. He's an underappreciated. Well, here he listen. He's the guy behind the guy behind the guy, right? Well, and he's also not on social media. So that is true. Yeah. But no, I think he's um, yes, severely underrated. I, I think, think him and Taisha, who also not on social media, are two of the best dressed people in New York. Also, uh, just catapulted from. I hadn't, I hadn't seen Dirty in a minute, but Ty. Every time we see her at Plus Plus, she looks amazing. Yeah. Um. Anyway, so I'm chatting with Gallagher and Dirty, making small talk. Who do I see? Come through the crowd, even though she's quite petite. Oh, really? Speaking I guess of, I knew that. Speaking of goats, Mia Khalifa. Yeah. Great dinner guest. Um, th- it was a dinner with Aries. She has done work with them. I believe a full-on collaboration. Collaboration. She's like part of their whole like cool it girl uh, roster, extended lineup, extended universe, etc. So... This is news. We are talking to her and her people about having her on the podcast. We have been for a long time, to be fair. Yeah, and then something happened, right, uh, on went, or uh, around October 7th, and um, yeah, she maybe so had what, to, like, not, yeah. delay some commitments. Um, <laughs> yeah. But anyway. Free Palestine. I've been talking to her manager, and we'd kind of, like, been like, bet, let's do it. Yeah. And her and her manager are tight. Uh, she... Over Didn't DMs. Brenda put in a good word for us at one point too? I don't think so. Oh. But, uh, oh, but, oh, thanks, Brenda. But, but over, D, <laughs> over DM, she's like, oh my God, hit my bestie. She's yeah, my yeah, manager. Yeah, yeah. Da, da, da. So <laughs> she's walking through the crowd with a, with her another bestie who's also fucking absolute smoke, to quote Lawrence. <clears throat> and um, we all notice her because it's Mia Khalifa. And the three fellows are just like, yo, oh shit. Oh, yo, Mia Khalifa's here. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, oh, word? 
And I take like three steps back and I intercept her. I'm like, Mia, what's up? I'm James. I'm throwing fits. She's like, oh my God. Oh, good, re- good reception. And I'm just talking business, right? I'm just like, yeah, I was talking to Sarah. She mm-hmm. said, you're traveling. She's like, yeah, I'm going to, the, I'm going wherever. Yeah. Um, but I can't wait to do this. I was like, oh, I got to start working on my intro. And she's like laughing. You know, but again, we're just talking business. But from where Dirty and Gallagher are standing, they mm-hmm. can't hear what we're talking about. They just oh. see us like, you know, touching the arm, oh. gesticulating. Wow. Okay. Like, laughing, smiling. There's like a familiarity. We're, mm. you know, eye contact. I come back and they're like, bro, what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> Your did game you just, is elite. Did you just riz up? The goat, me, the baddest in the game for real, for real, being Khalifa. <laughs> I was like, ain't no thing, but I was like, yeah, we were talking about having it on the podcast. But it was for a second there, they thought I was like the master Rizzer, um, the Rizza, the Jizza, the genius. I think, forget about your reputation preceding you or whatever. I think that it's believable that you would have the kind of game that would even work on uh, a goat, a goat of all goats. Yeah, she is wifed up now, according to her very cryptic ID stories. But not that I was like even gonna try no, or like, no, put no, myself no, no. in that no, we're, we're, fucking no. arena. We're, we're professionals and we are hosting, we are going to host around throwing fits yes. in a professional capacity. It was just a little funny quip that, uh, speaking of quips, that like all these, these two guys were like, Oh my God, dude, you fucking raised the, up the, the go the raise God. Yeah, I mean, the that, Rizza, the Jizza, the genius. That's uh that's better than uh what I than did, your performance which that night. was um gesticulating to uh such a degree that I uh backhanded a glass uh, a full glass of red wine off the table that then uh, shattered in the middle of the party and I did that in front of I would say a um a wonderful person, but who is also um a very much a person of note. Yeah, and I think the Which w- was a bad omen then for Vegas when the fucking spills went fucking nuclear. Oh my god, dude. Do you think let me ask you a question. This is like no pressure, no insinuation or anything. Do you think you could do one of these brand events like not when not drink? Is there an open bar? Yeah. Yeah, I mean I don't have a problem. No, but like would you but, still have fun? Oh. Like, like I, I had half a glass of wine at that dinner and I still had a great time. I fucking rizzed up the goat, or at least appear to mm-hmm. and still like reconnect, of. reconnect with 30 made made new friends reconnect yeah. with old friends um what's uh i don't know open I, bar uh industry facing motherfuckers am i with you i'm there do we know anyone else there you can smoke yeah we know people there but like not like homies or like a 3.54 out of six though no out of 10 type homie a of three, course a I three five it. homie of course i could do it i would rather have fun Oh, more so you can't have fun? Sorry, fuck. <laughs> I would rather have more fun. Gotcha. You can smoke. For free. You can eat yeah. mushrooms. Dude, honestly, smoking inside, at the, which I feel like is like a new, like naughty little thing that like fashion mm. brands are introducing, just like the new party favor du jour. I don't know if it still is, is like the bowl of cigs. Right. You know? Well, they were like, hey, there's there's ashtrays on the table. Wink, wink, nudge, yeah. nudge. Yeah. Um, smoking side rocks. We're being, so co- we're, being, we're being coy little sluts. Yeah. Uh, all right, oh, well, by the way, yeah. Chromio on the pod. Yeah, tomorrow. that's right. Uh, me and Khalifa sometime soon, but yeah. this week, Chromio, Dave One, and P Thug. In the building. In the building. P Thug, honestly, maybe the best, maybe the baddest in the game for real, for real. Mm-hmm. Maybe the best dressed dude in the game for real, for real. And a man who absolutely uh, doesn't matter how many pairs of underwear he's bringing on vacation, he is not wearing them. And we'll leave <laughs> no. it at that. Damn, I wonder if I could see his nut outline on one of these uh, bad boys. But that Keep was a few clips. days ago. Uh, all right. Chef, take us out. See you guys.